Hey guys, welcome to, back to my channel, and today I'm going to go over my entire knife collection. Stick with it. Okay guys, so uh, when I decided I wanted to do this video, I wasn't sure where I really wanted to start. Hear that little scratchy scratch sounds? That's Paige, the puppy, walking on the hardwood floor. Yeah, causing a, causing a, causing a commotion. But that's okay. This is just the best room to film this in, because uh, I've got that nice stone back, uh, stone wall in the background. So let's start off with my fixed blades. All right, um, fixed blades, camping stuff, whatever you wanna call this section. Um, first one we're gonna start off with is this Schrade SCHF36. And as you can see, has been used very much so. This is the camp knife. It comes with this nice sheath. Um, I added the paracord wrap. And it comes with a striker and a, basically a flint and steel to get some sparks. And it also comes with a quick shrade knife sharpener. Um, yeah, so this is pretty much the camp knife that I use. Uh, part of the reason why I have this is massively thick spine. Um, it's one of the main reasons that, and it comes with this nice sheet and it fits well on my camp bag. All right, next one up is I got this SOG collapsible wood saw. Um, not expensive, like you're talking about 20 bucks for this thing, and it works wonders around the campsite. It of course has a locking back, that way sawing something doesn't collapse on your hands. Yep, and it comes in this nice little sheath as well, so it fits right on the backpack as well. So now, um, going along with things that are in the camp bag, or on the camp bag, I should say, is this axe. This is a Fiskars X7, and the reason why I went with this little hatchet is because it has a hollow handle. You can hear that little hollow sound. The reason why I just signed it on this guy is because it's cheap, it's about 20 bucks, and beat the crap out of it and not feel bad and the hollow handle just cuts down the weight it makes it very front heavy which works well for a hatchet and it comes with this nice little um nice little sh sheath <clears throat> i'm sorry i just like choked on my words it's a nice little sheath and once more like the other ones it fits right along this right on the side of my camp bag works perfectly now my other fixed blade that is actually the only fixed blade not <laughs> associated with camping or on my camp bag is this combat ready karambit is actually the brand is combat ready i think something like that but here you go it's a nice little karambit um yeah pretty much it it's i think this is like 15 bucks i wanted to try out a karambit see how i like it comes with this um belt thingy not my favorite but not bad for the price you paid for it all right now we're going on to my traditional folders i keep them in this blade hq knife bag it holds 12 knives and i do not have that many traditional style knives um so i have two knives in here that i don't consider part of my collection they're family heirlooms two of them are from my great grandfather I'm not going to show them in these videos just because I don't want to bore you guys. This is a cheap little Swiss Army knife that my dad got at a thing he went to for work. I mean, you want a beater Swiss Army knife? It's not bad. Entire thing's stainless steel, cheap, cheaply made. Here is something that's not cheaply made and is amazing. Well, it's cheaply made because I can charge less for it, but 
something I would never consider cheap is this Open L number eight. Beautiful knife, beautiful knife made in France, and just gorgeous knife. Uh, this is a this is the stainless steel version. Uh, actually, for Christmas last year, I got my dad the carbon number six. Um, if you don't know, they come the Open L's come in two different steel tiles, steel styles, um, carbon and stainless. And stainless is more for of course if you don't want it to rust as easy. But uh, the carbon steel. Um, I'm pull this back out the edges of here are perfectly 90 degrees so if you do have a, a ferrule rod you can strike it with the carbon steel knife that's what i got him i got him a ferrule rod and an open l number six and here this little guy right here i call my baby boker um this is a boker magnum stockman two inch version and just kind of like a little nice little nice little uh thing it's fake pearl with brass it's it's just a cute little thing. This thing was like 20 bucks. Thought it was nice, and I wanted to get into some traditionals at the time. Uh, here is actually a gift I got from someone, uh, like $5 stainless steel. Um, $5 stainless steel uh, guitar knife. Um, not bad, actually. I carried this for a while. Even though I'm not a traditional style person, it was nice to have it. Um, as an unintimidating knife. When you pull this thing out, people don't freak out. When you pull out a, a Spada XL, people seem to be a little freaked out by that. I don't know why, I mean, I'm not. If someone pulls out a Spada XL, I'm, I'm down, dude. And then this little thing right here is my first ever multi-tool. It's a little Cabela's multi-tool my parents got for me one year for Christmas. And it has like pliers and a serrated knife and a knife. Um, screwdriver, flathead, pry bar, can opener, bottle opener, whatever. Uh, has everything you really need. It has a flashlight, which I kind of think is pointless on multi-tools, but that's basically it for my traditional style knives, like slip joints and friction folders. Now, I'm gonna snap this bag back up. These bags are great. Definitely look into them. Uh, they're big enough that they can actually handle a CRK. Okay guys, so, uh, when I decided I want to do this video, I wasn't sure where I really wanted to start. Hear that little scratchy scratch sounds? That's Paige, the puppy, walking on the hardwood floor. Yeah, causing a, causing a, causing a commotion. But that's okay. This is just the best room to film this in, because uh, I've got that nice stone back, uh, stone wall in the background. So let's start off with my fixed blades. All right, um, fixed blades, camping stuff, whatever you want to call this section. Um, first one we're going to start off with is this Schrade SCHF36. And as you can see, has been used very much so. This is the camp knife. It comes with this nice sheath. Um, I added the paracord wrap, and it comes with a striker and a, basically a flint and steel to get some sparks and it also comes with a quick shrade knife sharpener um yeah so this is pretty much the camp knife that i use uh part of the reason why i have this is massively thick spine um it's one of the main reasons that and it comes in this nice sheet and it fits well on my camp bag all right, next one up is I got this SOG collapsible wood saw. Um, not expensive, like you're talking about 20 bucks for this thing and it works wonders around the campsite. It of course has a locking back. That way, sawing something doesn't collapse on your hands. Yep, and it comes in this nice little sheath as well. So it fits right on the backpack as well. So now, um, going along with things that are in the camp bag, or on the camp bag, I should say, is this axe. This is a Fiskars X7, and the reason why I went with this little hatchet is because it has a hollow handle. You can hear that little hollow sound. The reason why I just signed it on this guy is because it's cheap, it's about 20 bucks, and you can beat the crap out of it and not feel bad. 
and the hollow handle just cuts down the weight. It makes it very front heavy, which works well for a hatchet. And it comes with this nice little, um, nice little sh sheath. <clears throat> Sorry, I just like choked on my words. It's a nice little sheath, and once more, like the other ones, it fits right along this, right on the side of my camp bag. Works perfectly. Now, my other fixed blade, that is actually the only fixed blade not <laughs> associated with camping, or on my camp bag, is this Combat Ready Karambit. Is actually the brand is Combat Ready, I think, something like that. But here you go. It's a nice little Karambit. Um, yeah, pretty much it. It's, I think this is like 15 bucks. I wanted to try out a Karambit, see how I like it. It comes with this um, belt thingy, not my favorite, but not bad for the price you paid for it. All right, now we're going on to my traditional folders. I keep them in this Blade HQ knife bag. It holds 12 knives, and I do not have that many traditional style knives. Um, so, I have two knives in here that I don't consider part of my collection. They're family heirlooms. Two of them are from my great-grandfather. I'm not going to show them in these videos just because I don't want to bore you guys. This is a cheap little Swiss Army knife that my dad got at a thing he went to for work. I mean, you want a beater Swiss Army knife? Not bad. Entire thing stainless steel, cheap, cheaply made. Here is something that's not cheaply made and is amazing. Well, it's cheaply made because I can charge less for it, but something I would never consider cheap is this Openel number eight. Beautiful knife, beautiful knife made in France, and just gorgeous knife. Uh, this is a this is the stainless steel version. Uh, actually, for Christmas last year, I got my dad the carbon number six. Um, if you don't know, they come, the open L's come in two different steel tiles, steel styles, um, carbon and stainless, and stainless is more for, of course, if you don't want it to rust as easy, but, uh, the carbon steel, um, let me pull this back out, the edges of here are perfectly 90 degrees, so if you do have a, a ferrule rod, you can strike it with the carbon steel knife, that's what I got him, I got him a ferrule rod and an open L number six. And here, this little guy right here, I call my baby Boker. Um, this is a Boker Magnum Stockman, two inch version. And just kind of like a little nice little, nice little uh, thing. It's fake pearl with brass. It's, it's, it's just a cute little thing. This thing was like 20 bucks, but it was nice. And I wanted to get into some traditionals at the time. Uh, here is actually a gift I got from someone, uh, like $5 stainless steel. Um, five dollar stainless steel uh, guitar knife. Um, not bad actually. I carried this for a while, even though I'm not a traditional style person. It was nice to have it um, as an unintimidating knife. When you pull this thing out, people don't freak out. When you pull out a a Spada XL, people seem to be a little freaked out by that. I don't know why. I mean, I'm not. If someone pulls out a Spada XL, I'm I'm down, dude. And then this little thing right here is my first ever multi-tool. It's a little Cabela's multi-tool my parents got for me one year for Christmas. And it has like pliers and a serrated knife and a knife, um, screwdriver, flathead, pry bar, can opener, bottle opener, whatever. Uh, it has everything you really need. It has a flashlight, which I kind of think is pointless on multi-tools. But that's basically it for my traditional style knives, like slip joints and friction folders. Now, I'm going to snap this bag back up. These bags are great. Definitely look into them. Uh, they're big enough that they can actually handle a CRKT Minimalist. Um, so didn't want to throw that, but uh, if you ever put a CRKT Minimalist in there, it'll be fine. So now we're going on to the Spyderco pack, which I think this is the 32 knife version of this pack. Ugh. Sorry for the loud Velcro sounds. This thing is massive, um, but I almost have it full, so that's kind of cool. Um, and when we get to the spot where the knife I'm currently carrying 
is, I will pull it out of my pocket and I will show it to you. So first off, we're gonna see all my Kershaws. Starting off with this guy right here, this is the Kershaw Fraction, uh, Anzo Design. It's the carbon fiber version. Amazing knife. Oh, I love this thing. Words cannot describe my love for the Fraction. Uh, HCR 13MOE Steel, amazing knife. You should check out, I have a video on this guy on my channel where I reviewed him in full detail. This knife is a personal favorite of mine. Uh, I, this guy got a lot of pocket time, a ton of pocket time. Now going on to the Kershaw Link. Um, this was actually uh, a Christmas gift from my parents. We were in, um, we were in Missouri. Uh, Branson, Missouri. We were in Branson, Missouri, and there was this knife shop at the one mall we were at. And my I, my parents knew I was liking pocket knives, and they wanted to get me into one. Um, the lady behind the counter, uh, she showed me a Kershaw leak, and I really wasn't a fan of it. I didn't like the size of it in my hands. I have decent, thick hands, like little sausage link fingers going on. Um, but it's a spring assist Kershaw link, and... Uh, the aluminum, uh, the blue and uh, blue anodized aluminum, amazing knife. Um, I think what is this? 440C. Don't quote me on it, but I'm pretty sure it's 440C steel on this guy. Um, amazing knife. It was actually the second second decent knife I ever uh, I ever actually held in my hand and decided that I was going to get into knives. This next one right here is the Kershaw CQC 4K. Um, just a plain down awesome knife these things are fun and they're cheap they're 20 bucks once again beater knives as far as these guys are concerned this is a like a little beater knife and i'm a fan of thumb discs i'm actually a pretty good fan and the wave feature is nice um if you're doing something one-handed even if you have the knife out you can just run it against your shorts or your jeans or whatever and the knife will come out and it's um, it's a great design emerson um Wonderful design feature on his knives. Now I have the classic Kershaw Skyline. Um, don't have a review of this guy up on my channel yet. Um, should be coming soon. This guy got a ton of pocket time just because I wanted to see what all the hype was about. Oh my gosh, this thing melts in my hand. Only thing I'm not a fan of on this knife is the clip. <laughs> Super high pocket, right? Uh, not deep carry at all very not deep carry uh that's not a sentence grammatically correct but i just this, the, and the knife is so good it's so good and the clip is just so bad but yep kershaw skyline had to be in the collection because you can't talk about kershaw without talking about him amazing knife with sandvix steel so now the next knife on the list is another carbon fiber knife I have a love for carbon fiber. You may see that. And things that are black for some odd reason. I'm not a fan of green. Even though there's one knife in my collection that screams green. Um, this guy right here is a blue and carbon fiber Natrix. Kershaw Natrix. Uh, beautiful bearing flipper from China. 8CR13 MOV steel. I think I have a review of this guy up on my channel. I'm pretty sure I do. Um, the only complaint really about this guy is it just feels cheap. This guy, uh, the liner, the like locking system feels cheap, but I don't know if it's fixed on the copper ones. I haven't tried out a copper Natrix yet, but beautiful knife for right around 40, 45 bucks. When I, when I bought it, it was around 40, 45 bucks. The weed knife is up next. If you guys don't know about weed knife, the weed knife, Kershaw decoy, um, Nice little worn clip blade, 20, 20 bucks. They're discontinued now, so this is a forever keepsake in my collection. 8CR13 MOV Steel. Uh, this thing is great, okay? Roach clip, disgusting. Clip, guacala. It's Spanish for yuck. Yeah. This thing, the clip is disgusting. The knife itself is great. I love the knife. It's a fun little knife. It's a fun little front, front flipper. And it really does freak people out. I found that out too about this knife, even though it's like big and black and scary. 
I'm I'm not the type of dude who like flicks open his front flippers. I just kind of roll them out, you know, kind of like nice and slow. And people seem to kind of not care about this knife a whole lot. Could be the worn clip blade too. You never know. All right, and this guy's also a pain in the butt to get back into the Spidey pack because of its dumb clip. Um, <laughs> next knife coming out is uh, I have a review up on my channel. First knife review I've ever done. Probably gonna do a revised version of that review. It's the Kershaw Shuffle. Um, great knife for like 14 bucks. Bottle opener because bottle openers are apparently the most tactical thing nowadays. I don't know, great little knife to have. It can fit perfectly in the fifth pocket of your jeans. If you don't know what the fifth pocket of your jeans is, it's a little pocket that was originally used for um, your pocket watch. Yeah, uh, it fits, uh, fits Zippo lighters well, fits these little tiny knives. Depending on what you want to go with, um, whatever you decide to go with. Now I have this in here, of course, it's the Kershaw K-Tool. Probably the best selling Kershaw product on the market. Nice little, nice little thing, <laughs> 15 bucks again. Kershaw, sorry, a, a notification was on my phone. <sighs> my phone's blowing up right now because of this whole coronavirus thing. Um, I'm filming this on a day that um, no one else is here. Parents are at work and everything else, so um, kind of just chilling out, talking about knives, because why not? Now we're on to my CRKT collection. Uh, four guys from CRKT here. This is the Squid. Kershaw's, uh, excuse me, CRKT Squid. Gorgeous little knife for like 20 bucks, and it actually has patina ink on the G10. Long story short, this guy went through the wash. <laughs> yeah, this guy went through the wash, and the G10 actually kind of faded, and it got a little darker. It's not as vibrant as it was originally in the original video. If you, uh, I did a review on this guy a while back, I think like two two years ago maybe i don't remember but uh there's a review up on my channel of this guy um the orange is faded because it went through the wash but still a great little knife nonetheless limited edition with the orange g10 don't know if it's limited edition or blade h2 exclusive or something like that um now of course this beast of a knife the crkt razzle or the razzle for the razzle dazzle um has a CRKT locking mechanism in the back. Great knife, perfect, uh, look. Graham was hit it out of the park when he came up with the design for the Razel. I can't tell you how much I love this design. It's a beautiful design and it's fully functioning. It has a Razel clip on the one end, which is nice, and then it has tip down carry on the other end, which is disgusting. Uh, I haven't taken this off because if you take it off, it leaves a giant weird shaped thing that doesn't match the other side of the knife and i mean that's not fashionable so whatever but solid choice if you actually you know try it try it you'll like the shape you may not necessarily like sorry the dog was doing something you may not necessarily like the uh this clip or the razor clip or whatever but the shape is great you okay dog yeah pagey's fine Okay, and then this guy is going to look disgusting on the blade because probably my most carried knife throughout 2017, I think, is CRKT Caligo, 2017 and 2018. This is my most carried knife, and you can see all the disgusting things. Caligo actually means black, um, so really great. Um, it's a Schwartz design. Now, Schwartz also means black. Um, just a smooth knife amazing knife i love this knife in fact i was thinking about getting another one of these knives and pimping it out with scales but deep carry clip with recessed screws thank you schwartz thank you recessed screws are amazing <laughs> just they're a must have nowadays with the quality that these knife the knife industry is at and here we have the P-Large. It is the CRQT P-Lar. It is a Voxnase design, but it is the P-Large. It is the larger version. Uh, the P-Lar is a little too small in my thick sausage linked finger hands. But this guy, perfect. I love the flipper design. It's nice and smooth, but also you can roll it out if you want. I've actually Spidey flicked it open perfectly. It has a nice little uh, finger groove, finger, finger choil, finger choil, that's it. Um, for your finger and the clip just disappears 
Beautiful knife, beautiful knife, beautiful knife. Um, now, here we have a pocket knife that I had that I got when I was like 12. Still have it for some odd reason. It's this unknown Gerber. I have no idea. Probably came in like a Walmart thing. But it's a decent knife. Um, I actually oiled it and it's ridiculously smooth. Has no tension whatsoever. Because watch. Okay? Fingers are not on the thumb studs. Flips open. I thought that was cool as a kid. Now I realize how extremely dangerous that is. But I still have it because memories. Memories. Oh, couldn't tell. We're moving on to Gerber's. So that was my first Gerber. This is my second Gerber. Only two Gerber's I have. And this is the flat iron. Flat iron. Well, I have a review on this guy. Just check it out for yourself. Tell me what you think of it. Um, the flat iron. It's interesting knife i am not a fan of the I, I don't know i think the pocket cleavers are kind of cool i think it's a cool phase i mean i like the razel and uh that's kind of like a cleaver kind of sort of maybe i don't know but um clip on this guy is disgusting guacala why are we making good knives here without bad with with bad clips okay that's this just, just sorry but that's just my thoughts okay now i have the only otf i own and this is a shred otf and it is a shred viper otf single action it is the model number is the SCHOTF, and it's I think it's the 38 or 3B or 38, I think. Single action OTFs, that means when you shoot it up, have to hit this unlock thing on the side, and you just pull it all the way back down, and it's ready to fire again. Technically, it's not an OTF because you don't just you don't click something. It's actually considered spring assist, but I would not try it because it's also a dagger. So I would not be caught dead with this in my hand because it's probably illegal in my state. Um, <laughs> to carry at least. To own, I'm fine. Oh, it has a glass breaker on the back. Nice deep carry clip, of course. Um, just a, a pretty solid knife. Um, over here we got, starting with our Browse Blades, and I'm a huge fan of this company. Browse Blades Silent Soldier right here. Uh, gorgeous little knife. This is the import line, of course. I do not have the time of money to be wheeling out actual Browse Blades stuff, but this import line Silent Soldier is a beautiful little flipper for 70 bucks. Amazing knife. Amazing knife. I love this guy. Nice deep carry pocket clip. Checks all the books for me. And small. So it has a small blade length. I think it's like two and a half inches. So it's pretty much legal everywhere as far as blade length is concerned. Um... But, of course, locking mechanisms and all that. I'm talking about the United States, not talking about Europe, because Europe, of course, is a way different animal. Um, this guy, <laughs> Browse Blades T4. It's a massive boy, a four-inch blade. I got this because it would be fun, and I like to use it. And all the Browse Blades import line stuff comes with D2 steel, and I'm a huge fan of D2 steel. This guy's real smooth. It's just a gorgeous little knife. Okay, this does not have a deep carry clip. But it has Browse Blades clips, and Browse Blades is my love. Uh, <laughs> here we have an M Tech. Going from Browse Blades to M Tech is hilarious in my mind. But here we have an M Tech. Uh, what model number is this? Sorry, the lighting isn't the greatest. It's an MT A705, and my aunt got this to me one year for Christmas because she knows I like knives, and it has my name engraved in it right here. You can't really see it, but it has my name engraved right there. Tip down. Spring assist. It's just, it's just, uh, I don't use it for anything really. It's just kind of like a little nice little thing to have. And then we have the Pack Force TF707, uh, Garbo, Garbo, deep carry pocket clip. Um, and it's just, no, just, just no. Just, just no. I have a review on the, I have a review on the side of the Silent Soldier up on my channel as well as a review of the TF-707. And I have a review of this guy up on my channel, too. Uh, San Ramu 7010. Uh, basically, the 710. The 710 just had a zero in it for some odd reason. Um, budget classic, $15. Should get it. Only bad thing, tip down. But I'm okay with that. 15 bucks Can't beat it. Review of that up on my channel as well. Now here we have a Baron Sons Balasong 114. First Balasong I ever got. 
not a bad starter if you want to get into balance songs that way you can figure out if you actually like them then you can start buying the higher expensive price balance songs um there's no review of that up on my channel yet i did use it for a lot of size comparisons though and i bet you could see that this is the knife that screams green and it is a boker kolashnikov okay there's not a review of this guy up on my channel i don't think at least i don't think we're gonna find out but lime green and black beautiful combination i think this was a blade hq exclusive i think not sure great great knife um just pretty much everything an automatic should do easy opening one-handed okay this is not a knife but it's in here too uh coupon pen definitely do not carry these anywhere people will fight you and uh aka the police will fight you and they will confiscate this from you and i got this for five dollars off of ebay i just kind of got it because i thought it was cool but i don't carry it anywhere because it's probably illegal all right this is the spot where the knife that i'm carrying currently goes the knife that i'm carrying is a steel wheel cut jack mini the c22m and it's with d2 steel beautiful knife gorgeous knife action is smooth as butter all right and then on to the next knife is the b2 grampus i mean the best tech oh gosh the best tech grampus beautiful smooth knife i got it for around like 45 bucks because it was being discontinued and i wish i would have picked up two <laughs> it's just such a good knife um i'm actually a really big fan of this knife um it's actually a knife that kind of put best tech on the map for me um, it's very comfortable. I mean, extremely comfortable in my hands. So, this might mean that I'm going to start looking at maybe get some more best tech knives in the future. And no knife collection would be complete without a cold steel. And this guy right here is the ProLite Tanto um, for like about 30 bucks. This guy right here can be in your pocket. And it's everything a cold steel knife should be. Big, burly, meant to do some work. The triad lock, of course. Um, just a, you can't have a knife collection without a cold steel knife, in my opinion. Cold steel is just. Do they go over? Do they go overboard in their advertising department? Mm, yes, um, very much so. But that actually finishes off the Spidey pack. So now we're just on to the Pelican case, and of course the Pelican case is not full. Um, I do not have that many knives, but uh, I do put some of my. Uh, Things I like the best in this bad boy, real quick. And uh, let me open it up. And I, of course, I have my pens in here too. Um, first knife, it's actually the cheapest knife in the Pelican case. It is Kershaw CQC 5K. Yeah, CQC 5K. And it has a, um, it actually has been modded, has this shell as the thumb stud, and it is a 357 Magnum shell bottom where the primer would go as its base. Nice little frame frame lock. It's like 35 bucks, I think, is the going rate on those guys without the without the added, of course, the added bling. Um, and here we got my Spider Co. Tenacious, the Blade Extreme exclusive with a digi camo and the black blade. Um, Spider Co. Ergonomics is key with this company. They are not afraid to make an ugly knife if it means good at ergonomics. And to be honest with you, I don't think their knives are inherently ugly either. Uh, on to the Manix 2, the second Spyderco I own. Manix 2 lightweight. Just a great knife. Uh, CTS BD1 steel. There's a review of this guy up on my channel. And there's also a review of the Tenacious up on my channel. Um, gorgeous knife. Just plain down awesome lightweight knife. And up next is the Kaiser Beg Lighter. Nice little gentleman's, gentleman's knife coming in at 3.5 inches. Has a uh, VG10 steel. And this is, of course, from their Vanguard series. The bag layer from their Vanguard series. Um, quality Chinese-made knife, in my opinion. Just gorgeous knife. So good. There is a review of that up on my channel as well if you want to go into more detail on that knife. Now we have a Benchmade, um, Benchmade Griptilian limited, uh, limited edition or blade, I don't know, but it's a D2 steel. D2 steel, I told you I have a love for that thing, and I do. I paid 75 bucks for this bad boy. Um, gorgeous knife with green, uh, green scales. This is 
everything everything a griptonian should be and i don't have any mini grips because the size of them of course in my massive hands um here right here's another griptonian this is a tanto griptonian um uh, limited edition with i think 154 cm steel of course male pardue design blacked out great this is actually my first benchmate i ever got um for 115 dollars i kind of went in I wanted to go in deep with a Benchmade because I knew I wouldn't like the mini grips, so I decided I'd get a full grip and see how I liked it and fell in love with the grips. They're so good. They come in many different variances and everything else. Last knife in my last knife in my collection, and then we'll end. Actually, you know what? I'll keep this as a teaser. Uh, as a teaser for you. Here's an Emerson tactical pen. Just a cheap little tactical pen. It's not. I got it with the CQC 4K because they came in a pack together. This is, I, ha I have a review of the Emerson pen on my channel. This is a Boker pen, Boker tactical pen. Uh, I have a review of this guy up on my channel and I should change the title because I figured out, I finally figured out what this is actually, uh, has a name, uh, not a very catchy name. It's like a B something, 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 something like nine or something. But I got it in the beautiful blue, Ben Blue. Um, if you know Ben from, um, in the older Blade HQ knife banner videos, a guy by the name of Ben, he has a fascination with this shade of blue. So I got it, Ben Blue, in honor of that Ben. Um, and if you're watching a knife video, you know about Ben. And this right here is an Uzi tactical pen. I think it's a number two tactical pen. Is it number two or number six or something? I don't remember. Has, of course, the handcuff key and the glass breaker. And yeah. Just a great little, great little tactical pen and does the job of a pen. So the last knife in my collection is a Bally Song. It is the Bradley Kimura Cutlery Co. Bradley, uh, Bradley, is it Bradley? Bradley Cutlery Co. Kimura. And this is after the original Bradley, um, they were bought out, I think, by... I forget who makes these now. Um, is it CRKT? Maybe. I don't remember. But this is actually a... Let's see if you guys can see that, what it says right there. It says, uh, first production run. Um, first production run of these bad boys, and I hope I got one, actually. And Amazing knife. Amazing uh, ballast song. Um, just fun to play around with and yeah just overall a great ballast song so guys this turned into a 30 minute video of my entire knife collection we're, we're gonna have to do one of these again when my collection changes because uh, it changes all the time I mean all the time I'm getting new knives in or I um, I don't really sell my knives but maybe I'll give one away to a friend or whatever um but yeah, so if there's not a review of this, of any of these knives on the channel, there will be one eventually. I'm working my way through these slowly. So other than that, nothing else to say, but be safe while this whole Corona thing's going on. Um, be smart, use your head, don't touch your face like I just did. Um, yeah, other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video.